That's a very good question. Um, so I'm not part of any art institution. I, te I love to teach, right? Because, and you must do this too, and you, teaching is the last part of learning. Until you've taught, you don't know you've learned it. Plus, mastery is about what you leave out, right? And that's very hard to get to know. But the more you leave it out, the more chance there is of you forgetting you put it there in the first place. Teaching reminds you what you're leaving out. So it's a gift to you. So you must, you must complete and finish there. Um, so I don't know the curriculums of a lot of uh, schools these days. I've written a few in my life. Um, but it's really important to look at it and see if it's become rote. In other words, it's just something they teach year after year, or whether it's something honest and very real because it's the new insight they may have had into it. Even if it's the same answer, they, they, they saw it again. It was true to them again. And check the curriculums over the last several years and see if they've changed, because they should, right? Not change to keep up with the latest technology, change to keep up with those teachers' insights into what it means to be a human and an artist and a storyteller, right? Um, what else would be missing? Traditional drawing skills are missing from a lot of schools. I don't know if that's still true. It was certainly when I went to art school. Um, we did have good life drawing at Glasgow School of Art, but I don't believe they, I don't even know if they teach drawing like that anymore. Um, and it's, why would you not teach the language? It's no good having a brilliant mind and great imagination if you can't communicate it, right? So I would say drawing and painting and good basics in that has got to be in the school. Um, Teaching you how to express yourself. If the school leans too heavily on that, I'm, I'm a little suspicious of it because you do it already every night. You know, you go to bed, boom, perfect dreams. Human beings all perfectly in scale and animated and great dialogue and lit beautifully and you didn't have to work at it at all. You already got it. So, so really what they be, have to be teaching you is courage. I don't know how you teach courage. You teach it by teaching yourself. You teach it by doing it. So opportunities to be courageous, that would be a good sign of the school. But, but things that are just about, you know, show us your inner life, your, your inner feelings, without teaching you and do keep a sketchbook so you know what that is, uh, I would be wary of that too. Things that cost too much, I would be wary of. I don't believe that art education needs to cost so much, especially, and I think your generations have proved it, with this magical gift of the internet. Please always treasure this because now there is an entire art education out there. Good and bad is all mixed together. The value of a school is helping guide you through the good and the bad, but, um, but it is there and you can actually get a really good art education practically for free if you know where to look, right? The main value of a school is doing that with colleagues. So you're not alone learning it. I learned just as much from my fellow students as I ever did from, you know, the teachers and the books and things. Well, remember, the matrix just gives you the knowledge. You suddenly now, martial arts, master, but mastery comes from the using of it. And again, the knowing when not to punch, when not to fight. And that you can't just have put into you. You've got to know it. Sometimes the hard way, right? A lot of the best lessons I learned, oh. <laughs> You know, you lose an eye or you did something you'll never forgive yourself for. But my God, you came out of it knowing never to do that again. Yeah. And then follow through. If a school abandons you after schooling, um, <laughs> really? Draw that money you paid them. There's got to be a place where you come back, you share, you let them know. You give back to the students, but they also continue to give to you too and help guide you. I think that's a good sign for school as well. Can I be the unicorn or the dragon instead of riding one? Yeah, please. Every time I get on a plane, it's like my head goes right down to, close to the wing as I can get. It's like, that's me. Get rid of this metal thing. That's me flying. But that's a good thing about the, the so you're asking unicorn versus dragon. Um, the one I usually ask is um, if, if you could have a superpower, anyone, what would it be? And it usually comes down to flying versus invisibility. You know, and for that, for me, I don't know, because invisibility means you can observe without disturbing and the chance to really see the stories without having, having people interrupt them because you're watching. Oh, oh, oh it would be so nice. But flying is the best. I got really, really lucky. 
I fell off a cliff in 1980, um, 250 feet, and I landed on my head. Um, and I, I got up, and I was more or less fine. I had a little crack in my skull, and but a lot of blood, because there's a lot of blood vessels here. But no broken bones or anything like that. And I'll tell you about that on the stage on Saturday, too. But um, I heard a voice when I fell off the cliff. Very soft, but very powerful, so it shook me in the air. And I just went, she won't die. And there was no questioning at all. And I don't know what it was. I don't care. I wasn't going to die. So I kind of put my arms out, and I flew all the way down. And I tell you, flying on a dragon or a unicorn, awesome.